Hi everyone, this week is Pashat Yitro. The Jewish people receive God's laws, the Torah, in the wilderness in this week's Parsha. Moshe's father-in-law, Yitro, comes and visits Moshe. And in chapter 18, verse 10, he says to Moshe, Baruch Hashem, blessed be God that he has saved you from the hands of the Egyptians, from the hand of Paro. And again, he has saved this nation from under the hands of the Egyptians. Miyad Mitzrayim, Miyad Paro, Mitachad Yad Mitzrayim. The question is, why did the Torah use the word Yad three times? What was the Torah trying to convey? It could have just said that God saved you from under the hands of the Egyptians and Paro. And again, if you look at the verse, it's so odd because at the end of the verse, it repeats what it already said, from the hands of the Egyptians. The Chassam Sofa points out that part of the oppression of the Egyptians on the Jewish people was to convey the idea that the actions that you do are of no consequence. There's no significance. There is nothing productive that will come from your hands. And that is the purpose of the word Yad, to teach that the Egyptians wanted the Jewish people not to believe themselves. The Jewish people built two big cities, the Torah tells us, Pitom and Ramses. And the rabbis tell us these cities were built on something like quicksand. So after the cities are built, they start to sink into the ground and the Jewish people have to rebuild it again. And that goes on and on and on to reinforce the idea that the Jewish people, what you do has no lasting impact. The Torah is the opposite. When God gives us the Torah, it gives us a chance to reveal God's presence in the world, that everlasting light, that almighty power, and that we Jews are equipped with the ability to make a difference and impact in this world. And if you look at history, you can see that in so many different areas. The Jewish people, before they received the Torah, they sanctified themselves. How they do that? They washed themselves. Before the Kohanim begin their day and their service in the Holy Temple, they wash their hands and feet. When we Jewish people wake up in the morning and start our day, we wash our hands and we make the bracha, al netilat yedayim. Netilat yedayim means to raise up our hands, to sanctify our hands, to understand that through our hands, through our actions today, we have an ability to make an impact and hopefully a positive, lasting impact. Yesterday, I'm walking with the boxes of a bulky box. I'm walking up the stairs in school. Students are passing me by. One student stops and says, hey, Rabbi, do you need a hand with that? And the truth was, it wasn't that heavy. But I stopped and I said, no, but I want to thank you for having the presence of mind of trying to make an impact to make my life a little bit better. When is the last time we thought about holding the door for the next person? And so on. And it doesn't have to be anything great. It's a simple act. There's a YouTube video by Steve Hartman where there was a, a young man who was adopted in a, a, by a family and he could never do anything for anyone else. And his mother finally said, I had enough. Can you at least hold the door for someone? And he started to hold the door. And little by little, he became a generous and kind and giving person. It all starts with one act. So in the morning when we start our day, we're to remind it, you know what? We have something to accomplish today. Let's elevate our actions. Let us reveal God's beauty and light in the world and know that you and I can make a difference in this world. If you like what you hear, please pass it on. Shabbat Shalom.